We've seen President Obama tour Buchenwald in Germany. He's the first American president to visit that camp where the Nazis killed some 56,000 people. It's an infamous stop on the World War II, or the World War II map, rather, and about 60 miles away, a camp and a horror that history is nearly forgotten. Berga. Do you remember that name? It's where American soldiers were turned into slaves and came out survivors. Thelma Gutierrez has their story, a story that only recently has been told. I'm glad to see you. These men, now close to 90 years of age, haven't seen each other in 64 years. <laughs> we made it. As young soldiers, they were captured by the Nazis and held as slaves at a concentration camp. Few people ever knew the horrors they endured. They were sworn to secrecy by the United States government. But six decades later, the U.S. Army now acknowledges that these American soldiers, known as the Berga survivors, were held in a Nazi slave camp. This is their story. That morning, our last death. In this tattered book, on pages that have yellowed with time, are memories that Today Anthony Acevedo kept to himself for decades. We weren't supposed to say the word what we were suffered through, what we were dying of. The German concentration camp at Buchenwald. Acevedo and 350 other American soldiers were captured in the Battle of the Bulge. Many were sent to Berga, a subcamp of the Buchenwald concentration camp. They were used as slaves to dig tunnels for the German army to hide their secret weapons. I go back to the books and I says, I can't believe this. Nobody knows about us. At 84, Acevedo shares the diary no one was supposed to see. Two more of our men died today. Acevedo was a 20-year-old medic who sewed up wounds and comforted the dying. He sketched atrocities and horrors he says he witnessed and cataloged the deaths of his comrades. Rogers, cardiac. Wells, pneumonia. Goldberg, malnutrition. While many starved to death, the rest ate what they were given. We had uh, rats. Uh, uh, cockroaches. In the soup? In the soup. In two months, Acevedo went from 140 pounds to 87 pounds. Lice just ate us up. They crawled all over us. By April of 1945, the Allied forces were closing in. The Nazis forced the prisoners to flee with them. We were put on a death march, uh, 217 miles. On the march, Acevedo witnessed men, women, and children too weak to walk shot and killed. Then he heard American forces in the distance. We were liberated today, April the 23rd, 1945. <laughs> this weekend, six of the 20 Burgess survivors who are well enough to make the journey will be honored in Orlando, Florida. But Acevedo, who lives in California, won't be there. He says he'll stay behind with some of the other survivors. As a young medic, he never left his men behind. He says he won't start now. Thelma Gutierrez, CNN, Yucaipa, California. Well, you heard in Thelma's story that the Burgess survivors were sworn to secrecy. Well, after Thelma enterprised that piece, a congressman saw it on our show here at CNN and got together with other lawmakers to make sure that these men would finally be recognized and their stories committed to history. Spencer Backus from Alabama's 6th District is with us, and it's our honor to have one of the Burga survivors with us, Morton Brooks. He's joining us live from Orlando, Florida. And Morton, let's start with you. How does it feel to finally be able to talk about this? Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, we've just been having a wonderful get-together. We are fellows who are glad to see one another. We're just a band of brothers. Uh, and that, that's uh, what I can tell you. Mm. And, you know, take me back and tell me why you were sworn to secrecy. I think a lot of people are still wondering why the U.S. government said, don't tell anyone about this. Uh, you ask a good question. I <laughs> have never found out, but I just know that it happened. Wow, really? Uh, You've never been given an answer? No, I have not. Where did you get the command not to say anything? Do you remember when that happened or how that happened? Well, uh, 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 many of us uh, got discharged from different places. I was discharged from a hospital, and uh, I was uh, just, just glad to get out. And uh, there were little booklets that were given about not talking about uh, our experiences. Some fellows had to sign documents that they wouldn't talk. So it varied depending on where the fellow got discharged. Wow. 
So when you were captured and you were put into this camp, Morgan, I, I, as, if I'm reading it properly, you were all lined up and questioned about your names and where you were from. Do you remember that? And, and did, the, did the Germans know you were Jewish? Uh, yes, they asked specifically. Uh, and uh, they threatened uh, uh, the group uh, that uh, if the fellows didn't acknowledge their being Jewish, that they would kill six of their buddies. So uh, nobody wanted that to happen. And, and those who were Jewish generally did uh, acknowledge it. Uh, so we ended up in a separate barracks and uh, known, as Jew known as the Jewish barracks. So you were separated then once they knew you were Jewish? Yes, we were. And Morton, how did they treat you? Well, it, it didn't seem to be much different than the other fellows. This was in Stalag 9B, where uh, many of the fellows were from the Battle of the Bulge. And, uh, and uh, so we, we just uh, accepted what was going on. It seemed that the food given out to all of us was pretty much the same. But uh, they did make the uh, fellows in our barracks sometimes stand longer in the cold weather uh, or, or, and, uh, and, and mistreat us that way. But uh, that was nothing compared to when we were shipped to Burga. Tell me what they did to you at Burga. Well, Burga, we were put into a forced labor situation. Uh, and the, the order for 350 came from uh, the SS uh, group uh, who supervised the camp at Burga. So uh, uh, they were getting uh, uh, the political prisoners uh, weakening and, and, and uh, not able to work, so they needed labor. And uh, we 350 were the labor force. Uh, but uh, we didn't understand about their uh, work to death program, uh, but that's what it was. Uh, we got uh, very little to eat. It's been estimated at maybe 400 calories and uh, and uh, worked uh, 10 hour the 12 hour days uh, 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 with pneumatic drills drilling into this rock wall and then uh, uh, after the uh, German munitions expert blasted the wall we went into to dig the rock and put it into the, the uh, cars <coughs> the uh, mining cars and then push it out to, to dump it into the river Oh. And, uh, and, and uh, that's what we, we and, did all day long. And, and, and I, I can't, what about when you um, saw the other Jews, um, not, not, not your fellow soldiers, but the other Jews and the condition that they were in and how, how they were being treated, how did that affect you, Morton? And did you try to help them in the midst of all this? Um, and, you know, in addition to yourself and also your fellow soldiers? Well, they were in different mine shafts. They had a lot of mine shafts. They were working on some project that uh, uh, I think connected with atomic energy at the time. Uh, I, I believe from what we can piece together that, the, that we uh, knocked out the heavy water facility in Norway and they were trying to replace that. That's one of the, the theories. Uh, but uh, uh, we know that they were pressing to try and get that done in, in the hopes of uh, being able to win the war. Uh, certainly the SS was working very hard to do that. Congressman, but, uh, we were the, go ahead, Morton. Uh, uh, well, that, that was it. Uh, 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 we were the, the labor force. We were not anxious that, to help them. And so uh, we were subject to uh, beatings on a daily basis. Uh, we, sometimes we try to sabotage a project and, uh, and, and bore the brunt of their uh, anger. Uh, but uh, they were extremely cruel and uh, had uh, no feeling for us as soldiers. When we brought up the Geneva Convention, they laughed in our face. So that's the circumstances under which we worked. Oh, Martin. Congressman, I, I know you saw the piece that, that aired uh, on our program, and, and now you've had a chance to meet some of the other guys like, like Morton. And, um, you know, when you heard about this, tell me why you responded. What touched your heart, and why did you want to do something to recognize these guys? Well, Thelma and CNN did such a good job. It just uh, it struck me. And uh, Joe Baca, California congressman, at the same time, and he and I got together, and uh, 
we researched this, we interviewed several of the veterans, and we found, among other things, uh, some of the things Morton uh, hadn't mentioned, there was so much, is that the average weight was, say, 60 to 80 to 90 pounds when they got out. Mm. And uh, uh, over uh, about 40% of them did not survive. Uh, they were fed uh, uh, sawdust on some occasions, uh, uh, cat and rat soup, and that, that sounds awful, and it is awful. Uh, what also struck me, though, were some German citizens and even guards on occasions passed them food, and on at least one occasion, a, a German guard was, was beaten for doing that. So when you listen to, to Morton's story, and even within this interview, um, what do you say is just so remarkable about him and the other men? Well, the fact that for years they had to keep this secret, and there was actually a two-page document that uh, we discovered that they had to sign. They were under penalty of, uh, of severe punishment to even talk about this. So to keep all this bottled up for so many years, uh, and not have answers, but Secretary Guerin committed Pete Guerin uh, to uh, to making this right, and I think he's done an outstanding job. Okay. And uh, I just thank Morton, and and I think I do thank CNN for bringing this to people's attention. Yeah, well, we're, it, it meant a lot to us, too, believe me. And I know it meant a lot to Thelma Gutierrez to tell the story. Morton, we are just uh, so honored to talk to you and have you on our air. And you've lived such a remarkable life, uh, so brave. Thank you so much for spending the afternoon with us. You deserve everything that you've received today. Well, thank you. We've had a wonderful morning with Lockheed and Martin. They honored us, and uh, it, it was a thrilling morning. So uh, we'll, we'll have our banquet tomorrow night, and we'll will uh, uh, wind up the weekend. Well, it's well-deserved. Morton Brooks, we honor you. And Congressman Spencer Backus, thank you so much for making thank sure you. that it happened.